Hi everyone, it's Grada Robertson here um, and I'm really looking forward to spending the next 20 minutes with you to tune you up into a more expanded, relaxed, happy self to bring out the best in you. Um, and tonight's topic is about uh, mind, body, spirit. Um, <clears throat> I was reading somewhere that um, in the years 1600, the life expectancy of human beings was only around about 30 years old. And today in the US, the life expectancy of the average American is um, 79, which is great. And, um, and in Australia, it's the same, I think. So today's uh, topic is really about how can we make sure that we live the very, very best life right till the very end. That's something that I feel passionate about. And um, because it's one thing, you know, that we've nearly, that we've doubled or tripled our lifespan in the last few, few centuries. But what is anybody actually teaching us how to uh, really live a great life and how to heal ourselves when we break down. And it's only very, very recent that um, mainstream healthcare realized that there is more to us than our physical body when it comes to healing ourselves or when it comes to uh, having a good life. And so um, mainstream health is now even becoming more holistic and focusing on the aspects you know that um, that we are mind body spirit beings um, but i still feel that there is not enough importance yet not enough focus on how on um, our spirit self our spirit beings from my personal experience i know that when we can open up to our spirit um, we are spirit. This sounds so paradoxical because we are actually 100% spirit. And so what does it mean to open up to it? But I'll go into that in a minute. But when we become aware that we are spirit beings and how to tune into our essence or our life force, we can pretty much shift any obstacle to healing. We can move through pain easier. Um, we can contribute to the world. We can grow and so on. Um, so yeah, I want to go a little bit further and I want to say your body is um, your spirit, you could say. There is no, no difference. Like without, if you took your spirit out, of course, your body would die immediately. Okay, so our body literally needs our spirit. Our spirit doesn't need our body, but we have been given a body right at this moment in time. We're doing this lifetime for a reason. Um, and one reason is that our soul needs to experience what it's experiencing today. And, and of course, it needs to grow from it and, uh, you know, help other people grow and, and go through all the... Uh, and the whole point is actually also to have a good life, so not to suffer unnecessary. So, um, and then the, the mind comes into it as well. So the three... You could say the three parts that we see today when you're looking at me talking to you now, you are seeing my body in action, my mind in action and my spirit in action. And that's the same for everyone all day, every second of the day. And um, so uh, our physical health tends to be the, what we focus on the most. And of course, that's what I work with the most. My clients come to me, generally speaking, with you know physical issues that they're concerned about most of us are uh, scared of pain i'm i don't like pain either we're all scared of pain and suffering and dying of course so they, the problems around that is what i get, get to see um so our physical body and is an important aspect of us i would Definitely not denied that part, but Pete and I do lots of uh, videos already and, and there are free ebooks that we've produced, you know, uh, how to keep your physical body humming along. So that's maybe not the, easy, not the hardest part. Then we have our mind. So our mind is very, very important too. And uh, tonight I'm just going to lump the mind when I'm talking about your attitude in life the emotions that you generally feel every day and the way you tend to think 
your perspective on life, you know, your personality. Um, I call that the mind. So mindset work is also really important because our mind can literally shut down our life force, right? Our life force is probably the same thing as our spirit. Take the life force away, you die. There's nothing left. Um, or tone your life force down, like let's say you turn the tap down um, and there's only a trickle coming out, you're going to get very sick as well. And our mind is actually capable of opening and shutting our life force or the flow of our life force. So uh, mindset work and watching what you think, I talk about that in, in, on Thursday nights a lot. Tonight I'm probably not really going to help you with that either. But even just having an attitude of gratitude, um, you know, fostering gratefulness is a really good one. Um, just thinking all the time, how can I be grateful for this? Why is this happening for me rather than to me? That's a really helpful one. And telling yourself a lot of the time during the day, just stopping and telling yourself how much, how much you love yourself. Even if you don't feel that, by the way, initially you have to fake it till you make it. But after a while, that is like you start to open the tap to your life force. So spirit is it, like spirit is working upstream, upstream of the river. And if there is a problem in your life now, in my opinion, and what I've seen from my experience, um, you get the best results if you work up river. So go back, that means go back up stream, find what's going on, what's blocking the flow and um, get that flow moving again into your body, get yourself into flow, which I'll do a little exercise with you today. Why is this important? And I'll use another analogy. Um, so your body right now is an instrument through which your soul or your spirit expresses itself. Um, you're here to have a good life, so you're an instrument and when you're, when you're sick, you're just simply out of tune, you could say. And an instrument needs to be tuned up every day. If an instrument is played every day, um, <clears throat> it needs to tune up every day. Every day or it needs to be checked and adjusted. Especially if you are playing, um, you know, to earn money, let's say in an orchestra. Before an orchestra starts up, before a performance, um, all the instruments need to be tuned up so they are in harmony with each other because imagine if one instrument is out of tune the whole music the whole piece will be destroyed and will be off so in our body it's the same so if um when an inst when an orchestra tunes uh, itself up it always tunes itself to the oboe the oboist so the oboe is an instrument that's not as easily uh, affected by weather conditions. So humidity doesn't affect the oboe as much as all the other instruments in the orchestra. So the oboe, he plays the note of A to the frequency of 440, which is a different story again, because uh, before the Second World War, it used to be the frequency of 432, which is actually the frequency of uh, unconditional love. This is actually really, really interesting, but I'm not going to talk about that tonight. You can Google it. Uh, when the Nazis came in, um, they um, enforced all orchestras and all musical instruments to be tuned up to the note of 440, which is actually the note of frequency of chaos. Um, <clears throat> and John Lennon, uh, he was one of the uh, artists who refused to do it and he got assassinated. So anyway, so the oboist will tune his instrument. He is in tune to the note of 440, A440, and then all the other instruments um, match with him before they start playing their music. And so if we get to do that ourselves every day, we tune up to our spirit, our spirit is not influenced by our circumstances, by our genes, by our family, by our work, you know, by the food we eat, by the chemical and emotional soup we live in, by influences 
uh, that are all around us because you, um, an, a musical instrument is pretty much only influenced by weather conditions and usually when you have an expensive instrument you look after it really well you make sure it's not in the sun it's not near the heater it's not out in the rain and so on but that's not how we live our lives you know that don't you we kind of bash our bodies we don't rest we we are often in toxic relationships and i mean we are incredibly resilient as human beings incredible we are really incredible beings so but we need to match up to our spirit self to the frequency of our spirit so our spirit i often do this our spirit is like this it's always still it's it's always tuned up to God, you could say, or the universe, on the, or the frequency of unconditional love. It's immortal, uh, which means it never dies. That means you never die, even though you might change life form, but actually your true self never dies. And then we have our mind and our body part that goes like this all day long, right? So every day we need to make sure we match up to our spirit self. And we do that every day, just little by little, our life starts to flow. And it's just the most beautiful thing. That means the music that comes out of you um, will be more and more beautiful and enjoyable for you and everyone else around you. You will be, you'll feel more love, you'll feel in flow, um, your relationship becomes more deeper and meaningful, you don't get triggered as much. And your body becomes healthier too. So yeah, I always forget to mention the body, but the body is an important part. It's a great blessing. If you can live your life with, without pain or with as little pain as possible and with lots of energy and, you know, fun and laughter and love and wisdom and understanding, of course. So tonight, this, this is a very long story, but I'm just trying to help you um, trying to persuade you to every day spend some time tuning into your spirit. That's like the oboe. And uh, uh, the, like I said, the oboe is not influenced by any weather conditions and your spirit isn't influenced by difficulties. And our lives do get difficult. You know, how many good days do you have in your life? Most of us <clears throat> um, tend to feel a bit overworked and underpaid misunderstood sometimes, life throws a few curveballs, we tend to worry, we have stress, we feel stuck in ourselves, um, we, we get unexpected pains, um, you worry, we tend to worry about our children and our loved ones and about our parents and about money and so on and then on top of that we often feel like we're not good enough, we're not doing enough, are we not showing up enough and so on. There's so many pressures. So they're all the kind of pressures that cause our instrument to be out of tune if we don't constantly open up to our spirit. Now our spirit is the same thing as our life force, okay? And our life force is what gives energy to our immune system, to our personality, and it's good energy. And so the key is if we can tune into that source, um, we're going to have a good life. So that's really what I wanted to say today. We can heal everything. So people can even have like multiple personalities uh, or, you know, borderline multiple personalities. It means very fractured in their mind. But that doesn't mean that their spirit is fractured either. Or like so people who have schizophrenia or, you know, uh, severe mental illness um, or bipolar, that there is still part deep inside himself that is perfect, perfectly healthy, uh, and it's their spirit. So many ancient prophets and, you know, people, spiritual masters, they've told us that our spirit self is our most normal condition. But we tend to identify with, you know, what we see, like uh, when I look in the mirror, I see grada, I see uh, flesh and blood and hair and all the rest, and my glasses and um, 
I see my family photos, I identify myself with all that, but actually uh, when we start to identify with our spirit self, we start to feel really, really normal, <laughs> which is a great feeling. That means we start to feel really settled. We don't feel needy. We know that, that everything we need is already inside us and it is us. So today I just want you now to close your eyes for a minute and tune yourself up to your spirit. Like, remember you're a beautiful instrument and you're just a little bit out of tune right now from a busy week. So just take a breath in, close your eyes and feel yourself become very, very calm. Following the breath down into your body as far down as you can go. And I'm going to encourage you to be, to make space for whatever comes up for you. It doesn't matter if you feel tired or crabby or stressed, that's all fine. Just let it show up. And then just go a little bit further back into yourself, into your body, go towards the back. Go into the back of your head first, behind your eyes, there's a very, very peaceful place. And that's one center where it's easy to find your spirit and connect with it, behind your eyes. And once you feel your mind is slowing down and turning off, your monkey mind I'm talking about, <clears throat> and you feel more peaceful and soft, you gently drop down, so follow the breath down into your heart center and go towards the back of your heart again. And just simply observe what comes up for you. Anything that anything is allowed to show up, anything at all. And then take a breath in and feel yourself soften more and then drop deep into your pelvic ball, your pelvis, and towards the back a little bit as well. And start to feel really, really grounded. So just keep doing that um, for as long as you can do it, like whether you take two minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes. After a while, you start to really, really enjoy your own essence because this is how you connect with your own essence or your spirit or your life force, which is your most normal self. I'm having trouble actually um, explaining. To, I'm having trouble finding the right words. Um, but what this means is that it's more, you feel more at home in your spirit self than you will feel at home in your personalities or your attitudes because they just tend to come and go, they come and go, they wear us out, they make us feel tired and it's not a comfortable place for us. But when we learn how to tune into the back of our body where it tends to be a lot quieter, we start to connect um, with our spirit self, with our life force and with the flow. And that's also one way you can release a lot of pain from your physical body. That's how I healed myself uh, after I got hit by, the, by a truck and I was left with a lot of damage. And I continue to heal myself like this every day. But this is also a good way to tune ourselves up because when we go into that island of peace that's inside of us, Nobody else there. There's nothing that can affect us. There's no, nobody who can harm us. Nobody can enter that place and nobody can take anything away from us. And if we match ourselves up to that beautiful, peaceful frequency every day, like it doesn't all have to happen in one go, that might be impossible. Because if an instrument is very much out of tune, um, and you have never done anything like to connect with your spirit, 
and, and you suddenly start to tighten up all the strings, <coughs> you know, you might break the instrument. So that's not a good idea. I'm just going to encourage you to, to just tune up like a little bit every day and match that frequency of, say, that's in yourself. That's actually unconditional love. So, um, yeah, play with it and let me know how you get on um, and how, you, how your life changes as you do that every day a little bit. So just to be totally clear, I'm not talking about being positive, right? This doesn't have to be a positive experience. Um, um, because initially what, when you go into yourself, into your own body and really connect with your spirit, you might encounter some resistance. Uh, I'm sure that there is going to be resistance, right? So you might come across sadness, pain, um, hatred even, negativity, self-loathing, uh, you know, parts that you struggle with in yourself. Um, but they're just little obstacles or boulders, you could say, in the river. They're just simply boulders um, in the flow of life. So they're not the real you. So I'm going to suggest just simply make space for them and observe what's going on. It's not about putting a smile on your face and pretend the sun is shining because a lot of the time the sun isn't shining. It's about being, showing up for you, who you really are and loving yourself, what's and all, making time for yourself. Um, and so I just want to finish with this because it really helps me because I think about life a lot. I think about why we're here, what the point of life is, why do we have to die, why we lose our parents or children. Um, but I just want to finish with this because we are spirit beings it's, and it's more normal for us to, to feel our spiritual self and we are immortal, our spirit is immortal. It's a natural state you could say is that we are spirits but we just get tricked and we think we are flesh and body right that means that when we die actually nothing changes and that's the last thought that i like the best of all when we die nothing changes and so when people die really nothing changes for them either because they spirit the same as who they were before when they were spirit as well and so they're always with us and around us, our loved ones, uh, the people who've passed over are still as close to us as ever before and they don't like being ignored. They actually don't like it that we think um, they've disappeared for good, right? They are here as real as they were before, so that's what I believe anyway and it helps me. It makes me uh, feel fulfilled when I um, when I think of life like that, it's a more holistic way of looking at everything. So, and um, yeah, I'm just going to encourage you to play with that. Just see how that sits with you. But first of all, start to connect with your own essence. And then before you know it, you'll start connecting with everyone else's essence, whether those people are alive or whether they're not here anymore. So thanks for tuning in and everyone, I can't really read the names properly. I want to say hello to everyone, but um, uh, I can't really read the names properly. So thanks for tuning in everyone and just uh, love yourself more and value yourself and tune up to your spirit self and you'll have a fantastic week this week. So I'm really, really looking forward to sharing a little bit more again next week. Let me know how you get on and what your experiences are as you sit with yourself and invest in yourself this week. Talk soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.